Back in the 50s, Potsdam in the wintertime was hockey. Everybody went to the rink. Everybody had kids that played hockey. Potsdam was probably the classic small town, college town with Clarkson University there. Absolute idyllic time to grow up in the North Country. Potsdam Central School had the hockey team of the whole upper New York State, unquestionably. It's very difficult for me to explain about Steve without seeming to be a very pompous and boastful mother. Not only was he an outstanding athlete, but he was a leader. Steve was the unique individual that uh, drew people to him. He wanted to be the best, and he didn't want to show it off. He just wanted to be as good as he could possibly be. Steve on the rink was focused, um, confident, never attempted to stand out, but always did. He was that unique individual that uh, made everybody around him better as well. He was just solid and good, and uh, he was our hero. There were many real good colleges inviting him for visits and showing him around. He fell in love with Colgate, and they with him. I think he really respected and fell in love with Howie Starr. He met him one of the first trips down there, and he loved him. The final straw was the Clarkson hockey coach stopped to visit. And he said, you know, if you want to go to Clarkson, it's all free. And after he left, my father said to Steve, guess where you're going to college? And Steve announced he did not want to go to Clarkson. And he wanted to go to Colgate. And that was the end of that. Up until this time, Colgate was famous for football only. Steve wanted to put all of it together for hockey as well. For a member of the Colgate hockey team to be chosen by the NCAA three times in a row for the All East team really made him a hero on campus. Our senior year, uh, we were scheduled to play Clarkson and St. Lawrence back to back on a Friday and a Saturday. Uh, we had grown up, of course, playing in the old Clarkson rink. Friday morning, I sat in the living room with him and he kept putting his skates on and taking them off. It's very hard to break a brand new skate lace. He broke three. He was concentrating on beating Clarkson on their home ice. It was a good game. We entered the third period behind by a goal. Uh, and within a minute, one, one minute, Steve scored three goals. And we took the lead, enabling us to, to beat Clarkson, which was quite a thrill. This building was full of people that knew him and a roar went up that night when he scored the three goals that you couldn't believe. He went on then to uh, graduate, get his master's degree, of course, at St. Lawrence and was coaching high school hockey and was drafted. When he was in the Army, he had been through OCS school and he was at Lake Placid trying out for the national hockey team. And the coach told him, your timing is off. You haven't had enough practice. You're not going to make this team. So it was shortly after that that he got scheduled to go to Vietnam. Defeat was a real ugly word to him. Yes, he was very disappointed when he didn't make the Olympic team. So there wasn't much time to be real happy never seen the wedding plan so fast and it was a beautiful wedding and it was a miracle wedding I, I swear to god I got pregnant like a week before he left there was a lot of walking in the jungle there wasn't combat every day it was uh, pretty basic living until they, something really bad happened that was no place for him because he couldn't hurt somebody whether he knew him or whether he didn't and that was not a good place for him to be. But it was something that he had to do. Lately, hun, we have been conducting night activities and resting during the day. We send out ambushes, and then in the morning, we come in and find some comfortable hooches to relax in during the day. We're supposed to be guests in this country, but the way we move into an area and take over, you'd think we owned it. It was all luck, whether you 
made it there. You didn't. In 1968, they were killing 650 people a week there. I've thought of one name for the baby if it's a boy, Thomas William Riggs. This is a very eerie feeling. I have so much responsibility, yet I'm not able to execute any. I'm sure everything will be great. I love you so much. And then he was gone. To many of us, I think that brought the war home to us. Up until that point, it was just that, you know, we would see it on TV a little bit, but uh, uh, absolute shock uh, that it could happen to somebody that was so alive and had so much promise and, and was our hero. Uh, his funeral was one of the biggest things that ever happened to Potsdam. The church was full, people were standing outdoors. I have been to the cemetery four or five days and talked to his mother and father about what is going to happen. They would be so proud if they could be there. I mean, it was just something that our family couldn't understand. I think he'd be surprised, and I hope pleased and honored that uh, all these years later, his classmates and his teammates uh, thought as much of him as we do and uh, were able to honor him in, in this way. And I would just like to say, Rigger, this is for you, for who you were, for everything you did, for your family, for Potsdam, for Colgate and hockey, and for your country. Thank you, Steve Riggs.